Hello, my name is Rance Taylor, and this is my video on my room layout and my room layout designs. So for my first room layout, we have this. And what this is, is I have all of my students placed in different table groups by groups of two. And so I have them spread out aligned one side of the classroom as well as the other side sporadically. If you did notice, I do have a curved wall in my classroom with the door being here. Back here in this area, I have my area rug, which is just a third grade classroom. So this will be my reading area. To this side, I have my two storage cabinets that is kind of covered by my finger. On the other side up here, I have my teacher desk where I can work with students or my instructional aid. If I were to have one, could work with students there. Down here, I have my desk as well as a projector. And then in this corner, I have my technology unit. So for this first layout, I wanted to introduce the idea of partner practice because I already have my table set up to be with two students together next to each other. So for this first partner practice, what we're going to be doing in my class is the inside outside circle. So how I will start this off is by splitting up my two partners that are already at their tables by A and B. So I will designate all of my students when I'm facing them, all the students on the left side of me to be my A's and on the right side be B. So I'd have the A's raise their hands so they all know that they're A's. They would put them down. I would go, okay, B, now you guys raise your hand. They would all raise their hands, and then that would let me know that they all know what number, letter, or group they're going to be in. For this case, um, it is letters. So to start this process, I would designate my A's to stand up, and what I would have them do is line up in a singular line, shoulder to shoulder, facing this wall. So this wall right here. So my A's would line up right here, and they would face this wall. Once they're all doing that, standing shoulder to shoulder, I will then dismiss my B group, and they will do the same thing, but instead now, they'll be standing on this side, facing this wall. So now that I have both my lines lined up, all my A's and B's are now partners with each other. What this allows is that since I already have these original pairs already made, this then splits up those pairs and allows them to get new partners because when they're at their desk, most of the time they're working with the same partner. But when we do this partner practice of inside outside circles, this allows them to talk to new students and get a better understanding and of how to work with one another. So to start this off, I would have my students sign up and then I would tell them what we're going to do. And that is basically, I'm going to go over three questions, just um, tell them to the students. And I would start with the first question first. I would tell it to the class, whatever the question may be. And I will give them 30 seconds to discuss it with the person across from them. So an A student is going to be working with a B student and then we have to work with one another and answer this question together. This could be any type of question, an open-ended question, one that relates to the topic, and we wanna relate it back to our topics and our concepts so that it aligns with our standards. So when we do this, we're gonna ask our students a question, I'll give them 30 seconds to discuss it, and then when those 30 seconds are up, I will use an attention grabber to get their attention, and then I will have one of the pairs share out what they discussed and what their answer is to that question. Once that first question is done, I am going to have the students get new partners. So what that means is that my A group, my person towards the front, towards the projector is going to shift and he is going to come behind these desks and back up to the back of the line. And then all my other A's are gonna shift down one. What this does is it gives the A group and the B group new partners with only having one line shift. So that means my students are not gonna get intermingled during the mix or the transition for the new question. And it allows for a better flow for this activity. 
Then the next question will be asked. My students will have 30 seconds with their new partner to discuss, and then I will have them share out their answer. They will do this for a third time, shifting after the second question. And then once we are done, I will dismiss each line separately. So line A and then line B. So when I, before I dismiss line A, I remind all my students that when we get back to our desk, we're going to be transitioning into reading. So what that means is that when they get back, they need to pull out their reading books in their reading assignment and have that ready to go on their desk. So that when the next group, the B group is going to sit down, the A group will not distract them and they'll just be getting their supplies out ready to go. And then following A group, B group will do the same. For the next type of practice, we have group practice. And for my group practice, I'm going to be using this classroom layout. So this is a rectangular layout. All of my walls are all straight and flat. And so how we start this, this is a door to my classroom. Down here, I have the two storage units, which will be along this wall, as well as in the corner, the technology hub. Up here, I have my teacher student work desk, which is towards the back corner of the classroom. And then down here, I have my desk. In the middle of the projector and the area rug, this area rug will be my reading rug, since again, it is my third grade classroom. And most of the time when we do reading, we'll probably be sitting in a rug, on the rug, in a circle, or in any other manner. So for this group practice, we're going to be doing four corners. And what that is, is each designated corner in the classroom is going to get a certain topic, let's say. So for mine, let's say this is the first week of school. I'm getting to know my students, everything about them. And I want to know what their favorite subject is. And this will allow me to know where my students are at and what subjects they like more or less than others, which will allow for a steady and good school year layout. For all my students. So to begin this, I would designate this corner to be one, two, three, and four. So in corner one, I'll tell my students that corner one is going to be math. Corner two is going to be spelling. Corner three is going to be history. And corner four is going to be science. So corner one is math two spelling three three history four science so once i've told my students all that i will have my students and i will say okay students point to corner one and they will all point to corner one and then i will say okay repeat to me what subject is designated for corner one and they will say math and i'll say okay point to corner two they will do the same thing so on and so forth until we go through all corners we do this before sending off the students because this allows me as a teacher to know that they know where each corner is and what subject is labeled for each corner. So to get this activity started, I am going to dismiss my groups of six all separately, so not at the same time. So I will start with this group right here. I will let them go first, give them about five to ten seconds to find their corner and stand there quietly. Then I will dismiss this group. They will follow them, do the same thing, then this group, then this one, finishing off with my middle one. And I finish off with my middle group on purpose because, as you can see, no matter what corner the six of them choose to go to, they're still going to be walking by other students' desks and or tables. So if I were to let them go first, there could be a bigger chunk of distraction when students are walking past one another to find the corner but if i release them last when they're walking to their corners they're only walking with their table group so and they will have all the other students who already be in their corners so it'll limit for less distractions once all the students get to their corners i will give them a minute to each talk about and go over why it is their favorite subject and what they're most excited to learn about that subject this year once they have done that, I will bring the class together, saying one, two, three, eyes on me. They will all repeat one, two, eyes on you. Then, with that being said, I will designate, not designate, probably just ask a person to share out in each corner what they talked about and why that subject is their favorite subject. Then this allows for all the corners to hear from each other and get a better understanding of each subject and what's going to be learned about in this class. 
Then when students are dismissed, I would dismiss individually by each corner, reminding each student that after this assignment, we will be transitioning to spelling. So all my students need to get out their pencil and paper as well as their spelling words on their desk ready to go. So that when they get to their desk, they're not distracted by anything else and they already have something to do.